So, yes, it's this room. Yeah, you can see this. The characteristic of the plants, even the leaves are different. Hello, my name is Gabriela Morelgaria. I'm here to talk about the term root rot of soybean, uh, which is the main topic of my project here at the lab of Dr. Gary Mumbold. I'm a grad student at the Plant Pathology and Microbiology Department at Iowa State. Since 2017, I've been working with Dr. Mumbold on Fusarium root rot disease of soybean. Fusarium root rot is caused by a complex of Fusarium species. Here in Iowa, at least 15 species of Fusarium has been reported as Fusarium root rot pathogens where the most frequently associated with the disease are Fusarium acuminarum, Fusarium oxysporum, Fusarium graminearum, and Fusarium solani. These pathogens are soil-borne and usually infect the plants through the roots at the early growth stages. About the symptoms, the main one is a vascular discoloration of the roots, which is caused by the pathogen colonizing the roots and clogging the vascular system, which leads to, to secondary symptoms including stunting, chlorosis of the leaf, wilting, defoliation, and in severe cases, the death of the plant. The optimal conditions for the development of the disease are cool temperatures along with high humidity in the soils, usually early in the growing season, but can still affect the plants late in the season when the plants are stressed, filling pots during reproductive stages. Unfortunately, there is no effective chemical control for this disease and no resistant soybean cultivars have been released. So the best way to manage the disease is to keep the soil well drained, avoid compaction, and minimize any source of stress to plants, such as injuries caused by biotic and abiotic factors. In my research project, we're aiming to identify sources of genetic resistance to Busarian root rot. With the preliminary results, we were able to identify parental lines that might carry genes of interest for this disease. And currently, we are phenotyping populations coming from these parents. And we hope to correlate our results with previous reports of genes associated with genetic resistance of this disease. And this is the comparison between a healthy plant and a diseased one. Now we are going to look at the symptoms. So, as I mentioned, you have to make a cut in the root so you can check out the, the vascular system and you can see here uh, the brownish color that's the fusarium colonizing the vascular system and in comparison to a healthy root we can see that the vascular system is white there's no discoloration and the plant is even bigger than the one that is infected by fusarium I'm very proud of working in this project because it allows me to address a problem that challenges our farmers at every growing season. And it, I think it's a way to give them back for everything they do to produce our food. And finally, I would like to say thanks to Fulbright, the Fulbright program and the Cal Paraguay for uh, making this project possible. I will clean this later.